The movie, set in New York City in 1939, starts with a mysterious arrival at the Empire State Building. A blimp docks carrying Dr. Vargas, who is in possession of something of vital importance. He carefully places two bullet-like metal vials in a package, which he entrusts to an escort with a message for another scientist, Dr. Jennings. The note warns of danger and urges Jennings to safeguard the contents. However, Shortly after the exchange, Dr. Vargas vanishes without a trace, his name ominously crossed off a list by an enigmatic figure. The story then shifts to Polly, a determined reporter who receives an intriguing invitation from Dr. Jennings to meet at a movie theater. Ignoring her boss Paley's cautionary advice, Polly decides to pursue the lead, and inside the dark theater, she spots a shadowy figure whom she suspects is Jennings. Her hunch proves correct, and she encounters Jennings, who shares troubling information about the recent disappearances of prominent scientists. He confides in Polly that he fears he might be the next target, revealing that all the missing scientists, including himself, once worked together at a secretive facility in Berlin known as Unit 11 prior to World War I. Jennings admits they vowed never to discuss the terrible inventions that they created there, and as they talk, the quiet of the theater is shattered by the sound of loud explosions and warning sirens outside, and before fleeing, Jennings whispers a crucial piece of information to Polly. The man who is behind the disappearances is called Totenkopf. Polly notices Jennings has left behind a blueprint depicting a massive robot, which she quickly takes. The scene outside the theater is one of chaos and fear, and Polly and the crowd witness a terrifying sight. Numerous giant flying robots approach the city, leading the government to order an immediate evacuation. In a rush to report this alarming development, Polly calls her boss Paley from a phone booth. She urgently requests information on Totenkopf and hastily ends the call as the robots draw near. Polly then takes cover behind a building, capturing photographs of the massive robots as they advance, shooting laser beams and causing destruction with their colossal size, crushing people and cars underfoot. The situation intensifies as Polly, while attempting to capture more photographs of the robots, drops her camera in a ditch. She nearly avoids being crushed by the advanced robots and retrieves her camera, escaping from the immediate danger. As the military find themselves overwhelmed by the robotic onslaught, an urgent call for assistance is broadcasted for someone known as Sky Captain. It is during this tumultuous scene that Sky Captain, also known as Joe, makes a dramatic entrance. Despite his efforts, the robots initially appear impervious to his attacks. Even after Joe manages to trip several of them, they remain operational. It's not until he successfully destroys a leg of one of the robots that it falls, leading to the eventual retreat of the rest of the robots and Polly's rescue. Joe then transports one of the fallen robots to the base near New York, where his mercenary air force is located. Here, he hands it over to Dex, his technical expert, who is known for developing state-of-the-art weapons. Dex is taken aback by the sophistication of the robot system, and he detects the signal associated with the robot's arrival, suggesting that they are being remotely controlled. Dex informs Joe of his intention to reverse-engineer the signal to locate the source. Upon returning to his office, Joe is surprised to find Polly there. Their reunion is quite tense, as they share a complicated past, as they were once a couple in Nanjing but split due to mutual suspicions and misunderstandings. As their argument escalates, Joe has Dex escort Polly out, however Polly uses Dr. Jennings' blueprint, which he reveals to be a design for the killer robots as leverage, and she persuades Joe to allow her to accompany him on his mission against the robots, aiming to cover the story exclusively. Joe then shows Polly their storage area, where they've collected numerous robots over the past three years, and Polly shares information about Jennings and Totenkopf, revealing that little is known about Totenkopf apart from his association with Unit 11 before World War I. She speculates that the robots are being manufactured there, and despite Joe's warning not to take any photos,
photos without his permission. Polly discreetly snaps a picture, showcasing her determination to document this extraordinary story. Polly and Joe agree to work together and head to Dr. Jennings' laboratory in search of answers. Upon their arrival, they find the lab door locked. Breaking in, they discover a scene of chaos as the lab is in dismay and amidst the mess, they find an oddly shrunk elephant contained within a bottle. And suddenly, an injured Dr. Jennings stumbles into the lab and while Joe pursues the assailant, Polly is left to speak with the dying scientist. In his final moments, Jennings entrusts Polly with the two metal vials that he had received from Dr. Vargas, warning her of the catastrophic consequences if Totenkopf acquires them. He passes away before he can provide further details and Polly, understanding the gravity of the situation, decides to keep the vials hidden from Joe. An alarm sounds signaling another impending robot attack, prompting Polly and Joe to quickly leave for the base. Upon reaching the base, they find themselves in the midst of a robot assault, and Joe, piloting his jet with Polly aboard, engages in a battle with the invading flying robots. However, Dex, Joe's technical expert, advises against shooting them, suspecting that one of the robots might be transmitting the control signal that they detected earlier. Joe skillfully takes down two blimps and shows the robots back to the city, and under Polly's guidance, they navigate a harrowing case through the streets of Manhattan, barely skimming above ground level. Dex works tirelessly to trace the robot's control signal, and in a daring maneuver, Joe dives his plane into the ocean, to much of Polly's horror, who fears that they're doomed. However, she soon realizes that the plane doubles as a submarine, allowing them to resurface and return to the base. Back at the base, Dex manages to pinpoint the source of the control signal, but is ambushed by the robots and the mysterious woman in black. Although Dex successfully destroys one robot with his invented gun, he's ultimately captured by the woman. Polly and Joe arrive at the base just in time to engage in a firefight with the departing squadron of robots led by the woman in black. The robots succeed in abducting Dex, but Joe and Polly discover a clue that was left by Dex, which was a piece of a map stuck in a downed girder with bubblegum. The map points to a remote valley in the Himalayas, Nepal, as the source of the control signal. Determined to rescue Dex, Joe and Polly immediately set off for Nepal. During this journey, Polly grapples with the dilemma of whether to disclose the existence of the vials to Joe, and they also read Dr. Vargas's journal, which Jennings had left behind. The journal reveals Totenkopf's sinister plan to build a doomsday device capable of destroying the world, heightening the urgency of their mission to stop him. The journey leads Polly and Joe to Nepal, where they seek the help of Joe's contact, Kaji, to guide them through the mystical valley of Shambhala. Kaji explains that Shambhala is known by different names across cultures. In Hebrew, it's referred to as Eden, while others know it as Shangri-La. They embark on a challenging trek through the snow snowy mountains, accompanied by Kaji, and a few local guides leading them to an old seemingly abandoned mine. Inside, they discover an unexpected hazard, as it's filled with uranium. Polly, exploring separately, finds herself in a perilous situation, with one of the guides taking her hostage, demanding the mysterious vials from her and Joe. Joe is unaware of the vials' existence until this moment, but Polly, knowing their significance, hands them over, much to Joe surprise. The situation then takes a turn for the worst as Polly and Joe are trapped inside a vault, which the guides rig with dynamite. Just as the explosives were about to detonate, Kaji intervenes, rescuing them in the nick of time. However, the explosion results in the loss of Polly's extra film and knocks them unconscious. When they regain consciousness, they find themselves in a luxurious bed, stark naked. A Nepalese monk, communicating through Kaji, informs them them that they're in Shangri-La and explains that their clothes were being burnt due to contamination from the uranium mines. The monk offers his help after learning that they're on a mission to find Totenkopf and the tragic story of Shangri-La unfolds as they learn that Totenkopf had enslaved the local population to work in the deadly 
uranium mine, leading to the death of all but one miner. They meet the sole survivor, a severely disfigured man who imparts a cane to them, and he claims that the cane will guide them to Totenkopf's base, and in return for his crucial piece of information, he asks for a mercy killing. Back aboard their plane, Joe and Polly use this inscription on the cane along with the stars to determine Totenkopf's location. Joe marks it with an O on their map, and he then makes another mark, an X, closer to their current position. Polly inquires about the significance of the two points, to which Joe explains that the O marks their destination, while the X represents the point where their fuel will run out. To resolve this fuel dilemma, Joe contacts his old friend Frankie, who commands a secret British airborne airbase. He hopes that they can refuel there, and as their plane's fuel runs dangerously low, they begin a gliding descent, only to have the airbase miraculously emerge from the clouds, allowing them a safe landing. The plot thickens as Commander Francesca, nicknamed Frankie, is revealed to be the key ally to Joe and Polly, and Polly soon realizes that Frankie might be the other woman in Joe's life, especially when Frankie casually mentions Nanjing, a significant place in Joe and Polly's shared history. Frankie, leading her amphibious squadron, offers to escort Joe and Polly to a remote island identified as Totenkopf's secret hideout. As they approach the island, Frankie and her team engage in a daring maneuver to distract the robot guardian. This distraction allows Joe's plane to slip through on detected, and in a self-sacrificing move, Frankie exits her amphibious jet just before it collides with the robot, resulting in an explosion. Joe and Polly resurface on the island, an eerie place shrouded in tall trees and inhabited by strange animals. Polly, despite the unique surroundings, refrains from using her camera. She notices the reflection on the plane's registration number in the water as H110D, which when inverted reads Polly. However, she chooses not to mention this to Joe, and their exploration of the island leads to a harrowing encounter with a flying dinosaur. After a narrow escape, Polly is dismayed when she accidentally takes a photograph of the ground, leaving her with only one shot remaining in her camera. Continuing their investigation, Joe and Polly discover a massive underground base, where they find an array of advanced technologies and a spaceship being loaded with animals. Polly surmises that Totenkopf is preparing an ark, intending to save the animals after he destroys the world. Yet even with this incredible spectacle before her, a Polly still chooses not to take the photograph. Their amazement is cut short when they're attacked by robots and the woman in black. In a timely rescue, Dex arrives in a flying flatbed truck, saving them from danger. Dex reveals that he managed to escape with some scientists, although others were captured. He explains that the spaceship is part of Totenkov's grand plan to give life a fresh start on a new world, which he calls the world of tomorrow. The ship, carrying the mysterious vials with genetic material for a new human race, is also set to trigger a booster rocket that will ultimately destroy the Earth. The team locates Totenkopf's quarters, only to find the entrance guarded by two robots. Joe, using a special gun developed by Dex, manages to eliminate the robotic guards, however a booby trap door electrocutes one of the scientists, attempting to enter. The trap activates a projection of Totenkopf's head, which delivers a Grim message. He sees himself as the last hope for a world consumed by hatred and self destruction. He warns them to leave or face certain death, declaring that there's no way to stop his plan. In the gripping climax of the story, Dex successfully disables the booby trap, allowing the group to enter Tonkov's study. To their shock, they discover the villain's long dead body, desiccated and holding a note with the simple, haunting message forgive me. This eerie discovery comes with the realization that they've only three minutes before the spaceship's launch, which threatens to destroy the Earth. Joe, understanding the gravity of the situation, decides that he must board the spaceship to stop it. He prepares to say goodbye to Polly, who insists on accompanying him. However, Joe was adamant about her safety and refuses, urging her to contact Frankie once the ordeal is over. In a desperate bid to ensure she stays behind, he kisses Polly and then, in a controversial move, punches her, rendering her unconscious. Joe's intention was clear. If Polly's unconscious, she can't follow him into danger. 
Meanwhile, Dex leads the rest of the group out of the base, but Polly, however, regains consciousness and exits the ship just in time to play a crucial role in the unfolding events. As Joe tries to board the ship, he's ambushed by the woman in black, and in a perilous moment, Joe is almost killed, but Polly intervenes, striking the woman with a metal bar. It is then revealed that the woman is, in fact, a robot. With time running out, Joe and Polly board the ship, crossing a narrow bridge over its deep, hollow core to reach the control room. The rocket launches and begins a countdown to release its booster stage, a mechanism designed to obliterate the planet. Polly, thinking quickly, presses a button that releases all the animals inside the spaceship, potentially saving numerous lives. The tensions escalate as the robots in black attack once again, and Joe bravely fends her off and uses her ray gun to disable the booster, preventing the impending destruction. In a dramatic escape, Joe and Polly flee in an escape pod, narrowly avoiding the explosion that would have annihilated Earth. They land safely in the water, and to the relief and celebration of everyone who witnessed the planet's narrow escape from doom. In the aftermath, Polly, with one photograph left to take, searches for the perfect subject. She ultimately chooses to capture an image of Joe as the movie concludes, and Polly snaps the photo, capturing a moment that encapsulates their shared adventure. Joe looks at her, puzzled as to why she would use her final shot on him, but the significance of the moment is clear. It's a tribute to their journey, their partnership, and the world they saved together.